Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the basics of commands in Minecraft. Today we're going to be looking at the execute command, which is the frustration of many Minecraft players. So if you are in that camp, don't worry, after this video you'll feel a lot better about this command and you'll actually understand how to use it to execute things. So let's go ahead and start executing things right away. Alright everyone, so here we go. Let's jump in with the execute command. Now before we start using the command, I want to jump in with an explanation of how this command is meant to be used. Now there's a lot of confusion out there, not necessarily about how to use this command, but when you should use it. So let me explain it really simply. Pretty much this command is meant to execute or to run another command. Now you might be thinking, why in the world would you need a command to run another command? That doesn't make any sense. Why not just run the command that you want to run? Well, the answer is sometimes you want to run a command at a particular place, at a particular time, and for a particular person or entity. Let me get rid of that. So, pretty much what this command is most useful for is running commands on like a server or an adventure map when you want things to happen at a particular time when certain conditions are met. So, for example, say... You want to make everybody who's on your server with a certain class have a speed boost. Well, you can use the execute command to do just that. So let's go ahead and start with a basic usage of the command, and then we can jump in with some more advanced stuff. So let's go ahead and type it out and take a look at it. So it's got a lot of different options here, but we don't need to worry about them right now. Let's just do the most basic usage, which is execute. And then we need to say at which entity we want to use the execute. So let's just keep it simple and do it at the nearest player, which is ourself. And then tell it where we want to execute the command in relative position to our target entity. Now, a more simplified way of saying that is we're going to run another command and this is where we want it to run from. So Let's go ahead and just run it from my exact position, which is represented right here with the relative positioning of these tilde notation marks. Now, if you don't understand tilde notation, go ahead and check out the video I did on teleportation and the TP command, and you'll learn a lot more about it there. Okay, so now that we have this typed out, we need to say which command we want to execute. So let's go ahead and just keep it really simple and do a say command and just say, hello. Okay, so we click enter and it runs that command. Now, here is what I was talking about with all the confusion that's out there about this command. You're probably saying, why did you just not write out the say command? Because we could, we technically could just say hello and not have to use the execute command. And as you can see right here, we get the exact same result. Well, this is the answer. The reason why you may or may not need the execute command itself is based upon when, where, and how you want your say command to run. Now, to make it a little bit easier to understand, let's get rid of the say example, and let's do something a little more complicated. So let's summon a zombie exactly where I'm standing. So we're going to execute right here a summon command at the nearest player and we're going to execute it relative to that player's position using these tilde notations which means exactly where I'm standing. Okay, so as you can see we've now summoned a zombie exactly where I'm standing with the execute command. Now you might be saying the same thing. Why not just use the summon command because technically if you just typed out summon zombie and then use the relative positioning coordinates you would get the same result. Well, this is where we can see how it works. Instead of using the nearest player, let's go ahead and use an entity with type equal to villager and a radius of 10. And let's go ahead and throw this in there just so it only does it on the closest one. If we try and run that, you'll see that nothing happens because there are no entities with all of that data nearby. So you can see there's villagers up here on the top level, but they're not within 10 blocks radius. So let's summon one here and run the exact same command. And now 
you'll see that we've used the execute command to summon a zombie exactly on the position of this villager. Alrighty guys, so now you may be wondering when you would ever use this command since we haven't done anything really cool with it yet. So here's an advanced uh, example that we can take a look at. So if you look over there in the distance, you'll see that there's a villager. Now, if I walk near him, you'll notice that something changes. I now have a speed boost just from being nearby to this villager. So if I walk away, the speed boost is gone. If I walk back near this villager, it's now activated. So here's how it works. Inside of this command block, we have an execute command that's running a command, which is the effect command, at all villagers. Okay, so pretty much what's happening is the execute command is running this command over and over and over because it's inside a repeating command block. And where it is running it, is on top of all of the villagers at their exact location. Now what gives me the effect is the actual effect command. So if you look at that command, you'll see that it's targeting the nearest player within a radius of four blocks. So the radius of where this is coming from is the position of the villager. Now I know this is sounding confusing. It's a lot to think about because you're talking about not only where you want to run the command, but to whom you want to run the command on or to what you want to do if you're using a command that doesn't have to run on a player or on an entity. So anyways, here's an advanced way that you can use this and I'll show you guys a couple more examples to try and make it clearer as it goes on. So in this next example, we're going to look at how we can use the particle command with the execute command. So if we turn this on, you'll see I have tons and tons and tons of flames flying out of where I'm at. So let me switch the view here. There you go. I'm on fire. All right, so the way this is working is all with the execute command. So let's turn this off so we can see and talk about it. So we're executing just like we have been at the nearest player and relative to that player's position. And then we're running a different command. So last time we did the effect command and this time we're gonna be doing the particle command. So I'm not gonna explain this command right now because I'm gonna do that in a later video, probably actually the next video. I'll probably do the particle command and then do the effect command since we looked at those today and we haven't actually learned how to use those together yet. So anyways, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm running the particle command on top of myself over and over and over with the XU command. So if I turn it on, it runs, and turn it off, it stops. Now, just to show you guys uh, how you can do this uh, a little differently is instead of executing this at myself, we can go ahead and target those villagers one more time. And when you do it a second time, the villagers are now shooting out all of the flame particles, which looks <laughs> pretty hilarious. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, like I said, the execute command can be pretty confusing. And one of the reasons it can be is because stuff like this happens when people use the command. So anyways, let's check out another advanced usage. So here's another way you can use the execute command to do something advanced. If I go near this NPC, he will automatically teleport me into the jail. And as you can imagine, you can use this for all sorts of adventure maps or even uh, multiplayer servers. And actually, in a previous video I did, I believe it was one in this series on the say command and the op command and a few other multiplayer ones, I gave an, a spoiler of an advanced feature that I'm going to be doing in a little bit on NPC police officers. So if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and take a look at that sometime because it's way more advanced than what I'm about to show you. But anyways, here's an extremely basic version of NPC police. So if I go near this police officer, He'll automatically arrest me, and I'm now in the jail. So this is how it works. We're doing the execute command, and we're using it to execute a TP command. Now, we're running the TP command at all of the villagers at their exact location with this repeating command block over and over, just like we were in the previous examples. And this time, we're using the TP command to teleport the nearest player within a one block radius to the villager into 
the jail cell, which is represented here by these uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if I go near another villager, every time I'm within one block, I will be arrested. So that's how you can use a very simple execute and TP command to make a sort of functioning NPC police officer in your Minecraft world. Okay guys, this is the last example I have for you guys, and it is a very complicated one. So don't feel discouraged if you get really confused looking at this. Pretty much I'm just going to give you a preview. Now if you are at all interested in this feature with the execute command, go ahead and check out the video I did in my command help series where I actually explain how to build this and how it works. So pretty much what it is, is it's a feature for PvP servers that when you die, you turn into a ghost for 10 seconds and then respawn back at whatever uh, the PvP spawn point is on the, uh, like the arena or whatever it's used for. So anyways, I just want to show you guys, if you look in here, we have the execute command and uh, it's pretty much all over the place because it's an extremely powerful command that allows you to do things just like this. So here we go. Let me go into survival mode so you guys can see how it would work if I was on a PvP server. And then imagine that I got killed by another player. And here it is in action. So I'm a ghost now. Uh, for 10 seconds, I have free reign to spectate the PvP fight. And then once it goes to zero seconds, I'm now back at the spawn point. That's it guys, thanks for watching, and if you made it all the way to the end of this video, congratulations to you for being so zealous to learn how to use the execute command, because it is a really heavy command to think about, and it's extremely discouraging for a lot of people because it's so confusing, not just how to use it, but when, and once you get into using all the different variations of it, it's just technically a limitless command, and therefore a limitless realm of confusion. So anyways, congrats to you guys. Thanks so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And because you guys stay to the very end, I have something special just for you. If you want to download either this house right here or this house right here to use in a structure block, I've included them in the description below in this video. So if you go down there, click the download link, you'll get the file that you need to put it in a structure block and then bring it into your actual world. Now, these are the two houses that I did on my build tutorial series. So you can go over there and check that out if you're interested in learning how to build in addition to commands. And if you're just interested in commands, I've also put down in the description below the command blocks that are required for that respawn PVP timer. So in other words, you guys don't have to try and follow along in the video that I made earlier on how to build it. You can go ahead and just download those command blocks, use a structure block to paste them in, and then activate them. And you'll then have that PVP functionality on your own Minecraft world or server. So thanks so much, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to tone it down a little bit and go back to some more basic stuff and check out those particle commands and the effect commands.